She was just 12 years old when her older brother Louis Tomlinson auditioned for The X Factor. The family's life changed forever from that moment, with One Direction going on to be one of the world's most famous boy bands. But nothing could have prepared the Tomlinson family for what was to come next, uh, with both their mother, Johanna, dying of leukemia in 2016, followed by the unexpected passing of sister Felicity in 2019. Um, and Lottie joins us now alongside Shadow Cabinet Minister for Mental Health, Dr. Rosanna Allen Khan, um, both campaigning for better support for those grieving. Thank you very much uh, you for, for joining us Thank today. You and and Lottie, particularly when we can see that you have uh, a <laughs> new arrival yeah, coming. Yeah, he's not, he's not far off. Pretty soon, yeah. yeah. Um, can I take you back to, to 2016, if you, if you don't mind? Um, you were only 17 years yeah. of age at, at that time. Did, did you get any help dealing with the loss of your mum? Because it, it happened so quickly, didn't it, in the space of eight months, really, from diagnosis? Yeah, so it was really quick, and then, obviously, losing my mum at 18, such a heartbreaking, scary thing. Mm. And it was quite shocking that we were around a lot of health professionals and nothing really got offered to us. And then losing my sister two years later, um, the same again, nothing really got offered. So I kind of felt that it was like my responsibility for the family to kind of get some help and it made such a difference. So that's why now I want to try and encourage people to do that and kind of help there be a better system in place for people that do need the help. So how, how did you get through that? I mean, it's been a long hard journey but I feel, feel like the therapy really helped me and um, so that's why I want to help there be this pathway in place for people to be able to get that help but also leaning on family as well was a big one because I'm part of a really big family and mm. um, so I feel like people need to be better educated on how to help as well and mm -hmm. um, so that's why I work closely with Sue Ryder to try and improve on these things. Mm -hmm. Did you, you say that you come from a big family, did you find that you all reacted to grief differently? Yeah, I think it was, everyone had their own reaction because everyone is different um, and obviously my sister didn't cope very well and then everything that happened with her happened um, and I feel things could have been different if she would have got the help so that's why I'm quite passionate about trying to make that Difference. I think this is one of the problems actually because there is no recipe for grief and everybody Absolutely. grieves at a different pace or in a yeah. different way yeah. and I'm wondering did you actually grieve differently for your mum and your sister? Did you even find a difference there in yeah. how you coped? Yeah, I think that was really interesting to me because it was such a difference. Obviously it's going to be different because it's two different relationships. You kind of mourning like a mum relationship and then your sister's more of like a friendship relationship. Mm. Um, and then obviously the different ages, like there's a lot that comes into play. Um, so yeah, like there's not one size fits yeah. all with grief and everyone kind of deals with, with it in their own way. Um, so yeah, it's... it's that important. could be difficult in a family too, kind of, if you're grieving in a particular way and other members of the family are grieving a different way that perhaps doesn't yeah. feel right to you, then, you know, you're all kind of crazy with it, aren't yeah. you? And, and that can cause tensions within the family. Yeah. And it's having the access, it sounds like you, you waited a little while. I would, yeah. And I would just say you'd wait until you felt even comfortable to be able to ask for help. Yeah, so I got recommended to wait three months after a loss, yes. and that's kind of what they say. Yeah. But then I feel like that might be the time space where you're really going to a really dark place that first three months. I feel like it should be have a subject to what you think and feel. Um, but then I felt really lucky that I was even able to get this help because it's a very expensive to go privately and get yeah, therapy. Yeah, yeah. And then, and, and Rosanna, you lost your dad yes, last year. Yeah. So yeah. Tell, yes. tell us a bit about what you're asking for at, at Parliament. Well, for me personally, I went through the grief process last year and really learned exactly what Lottie said, which that it isn't a one size fits all process you know some people need to sleep for a really long time some people you know drink more and there's no judgment on that some people like me throw themselves into exercise just to get away from the pain of it all but as well as having gone through it myself I've been a doctor for 17 years so I've seen people go through the grief process and I'm sorry to interrupt but people yeah. expect you as a doctor in a way to be able to cope better but I guess that's not the case yeah but I think you also think that of yourself and I think until you've gone through it you don't realize that all-encompassing grief that you can go through and how it occupies every every fiber of your body and I think that the biggest thing I learned was and the thing that I say to my patients is just be kind to yourself understand that no two days will be the same mm. but it's important to allow yourself to feel however it is 
you need to feel to get through it and also you can have delayed grief as well mm. so I know is, it, that, that, is yeah. it a bit of a postcode lottery at the moment as to what help you get yeah so for example I mean um, Sue Ryder did an incredible report that showed that 70% of people don't feel they have access to the support that they need in my hospital if somebody unfortunately dies and because I'm an AME doctor we see that a lot I feel as though I'm able to plug people into services, but some people don't find themselves going through a hospital. They might need to get help and support from their GP or their So how would you find that to your route? How would you do that? Well, I do think that we'd absolutely have to explore having a pathway that is set in stone where people know that they can access help. It isn't a one-size-fits-all, and we also know that culturally specific uh, information is really important because some people that may go to the church or the mosque or the synagogue are told, oh, you know, it, this all happens, it's part and parcel of life, and you can find yourself feeling things that, that you, you know, almost feeling guilty for feeling grief. Yeah. So I think it's about saying that if there is a one-stop shop port of call where people know they can go to access the help and information that is culturally specific to them or their area or their community. But where would that be? That's the thing I'm trying to get onto. Is it a government set up thing or is it a charity set up thing? Where would that hub be? Well, personally, I, I think that what we should be campaigning for is to explore the opportunity to have a service that is centralised, mm. that is it's easily right, accessible, easy accessible for everyone. Mm. So wherever you are, you know that, that that is where you go. I think there is so much burden now placed on the charity yeah. sector. We do have incredible charities like Sue Ryder, mm. but it shouldn't be the responsibility of of the charities to be the backstop for people, it has to be easy to do. But people don't feel, well, oh, I've got to get help because I am struggling. Yeah. But there's some sense of failure. I mean, yeah. you know, grief is such a powerful emotion. It's not that you're failing no. if you don't deal with it, but actually... It takes it experience. Takes it, it does take experience. experience. You know, grief opens up emotions that you're not even aware was there. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, I can't get the time back to ask you certain things yeah. because I don't know why I feel like this, because it's so final, and I think, what you're both saying, having something that takes in that moment where you're not even sure what you're going to feel, yeah. there's something there that you can access. Instead, instead of having to wait, yeah. or instead of having to get to that extra dark place, there's yeah. something that is just there at that time to say, when you're ready, mm -hmm. here is information. I think it's about, um, it's about the educated people and what you can do. Like Even yes. the GPs, they don't know where to send people. Mm. And I feel like having maybe like a leaflet or something yeah. where, because there's a lot of grief cafes and things like that, I didn't even know they existed yeah. Yeah. before I worked with Sue Ryder. Which doesn't cost money. No, yeah, some people just want to go and feel like they relate to someone and they want to speak it through. Yeah. Even having like something that just lays it out to someone who comes in to the GP and says, I need help. Mm. They can get given this and just have a few options. I mean, I guess we are generally maybe not that good about speaking about what we're doing today on Lucy's is so yeah. important that people will watch this and know that it's okay not to feel okay, mm. that there is help out there, yeah. but, but that the will for change is there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in. Really lovely to see thank both you of you. you. It's an absolutely wonderful best of you. Thank of you. Of thank you. Of thank you. Of thank you. Of thank you. <laughs> She'll be sitting at home with your feet up. Watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been affected by anything we've been talking about today, there are helplines available on our website. Um, still to come, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck got married at the weekend in a very low-key ceremony, so perhaps simplicity is the key when it comes to a successful marriage, or perhaps happiness is waiting for us all as we get older. We'll be discussing that right after this short break.